I like the way they do it in Iran, right? They call themselves the Supreme Leader. Ayatollah Khamenei calling the U.S. a bully over these new sanctions and by trying to decertify that deal that they thought was ironclad. What's worrisome, though, is uh, he's getting a sympathetic year in Europe. Uh, by the way, not the president, the Supreme Leader. Former CIA analyst Fred Flights on this. Fred, that worries me. Obviously, they're concerned that is in Europe that this president's going to walk away from a deal they say has problems but shouldn't be decertified. So where's this going? Well, let's think about this, Neil. We have these European elites who are trying to dictate solutions to Middle East security problems, including Iran. Uh, and they're, they're basically condemning President Trump's approach to the Iran deal. But Israel and Saudi Arabia, who are far more affected by the threat from Iran, they immediately endorsed the president's approach. And I think we have to consider one reason for this are all these trade deals that John Kerry aggressively promoted to lock this deal down and make it hard for the next president to pull out. So the president wants to rework this. He isn't abdicating the deal. He's just saying we can toughen it up. We can add more teeth, I think, quoting uh, Secretary of State Rex Tillerson. Can you? Well, I actually, I think the prospects of fixing this deal are remote. What I think the president did was he gave Congress an opportunity to fix it. I think the president intends to leave the deal unless Congress comes through. I don't think the president expects Congress to fix it. I know we've been hearing some conflicting signs from other people. I take it from the comment that the president made based on a recommendation from my old boss, John Bolton, that he retains the right to pull out of the deal, and he'll do so if Congress doesn't fix it. Um, so if I'm Iran, I'm looking at this and I'm trying to play, it, it almost seems like my kids, you know, playing off myself and my wife, right? Uh, well, you said we couldn't go out, but, but dad says we can. And I get a feeling that that's what Iran is going to try to do to divide and conquer among the Western powers that signed off on this thing. Donald Trump's being the media. You guys signed off onto this. We're doing business with you now. We're ordering a bunch of planes from you, France, and Europe collectively, Airbus and the like. So come on here. Um, how did, how's that going to go? Well, that's right. And there's also a contract with Boeing. And these contracts were both announced exactly. after Iran met its commitments for the deal to go into place. It was ingenious. John Kerry was so active in doing this in mid-2016, he was accused of being a new lobbyist for Iran. The Iranians know what the game is here. They also know this is an incredibly generous deal for them. They don't want it to go away. So, it, it, you know, you know, and I think you and I talked about this, that if we walk away from this deal, even though it wasn't done and approved by, by, by Congress, so it's technically not a treaty, I guess, but, but walking away from it would, would send a very, and set a very bad precedent, would it? I don't think it would set a bad precedent. This deal legitimizes Iran's nuclear program and has a very short uh, duration. We need permanent sanctions against Iran, barring transfers of nuclear technology. And the power of the U.S. economy can force companies worldwide to do that. It's a bad deal. It legitimizes Iran's nuclear program. It allows it to continue, continue to enrich uranium with over 5,000 centrifuges. Unless that can be fixed, I think it's better to get out. All right. Fred, great seeing you again. Thank you very, very much. I'm just going to call you the Supreme Fred Flights. <laughs> I, just, I don't know. I just think it works.